Whales and dolphins have an enduring fascination for us. I think it's something to do with their relative intelligence, the fact that they have this remarkable vocabulary. They are quintessentially beautiful, of course, but they're also essentially mysterious. See, whenever you see one, you're left wanting more, not just to see more, but to know more. And the Bay of Biscay here is ranked amongst the top five places on Earth to go whale and dolphin spotting. If you keep your eyes peeled, you can in fact see a third of the 90 species that we currently have on the planet. Pretty remarkable. So what makes it so special? Well, it's not what's happening on the surface. What's happening underneath is what counts. It's got a bit of continental shelf as you run round the coast of France and Spain. And this is shallow water, 100 to 150, 200 metres. The perfect habitat for harbour porpoises, Risso's dolphin and common dolphin. And then all of a sudden you get to the edge of that continental shelf and it drops off to 4,000 metres of water. This is the habitat of the great whales. You can see fin whale here, the second largest animal on Earth. Occasionally even blue whale, the very largest. And on some trips, we've even been lucky enough to spot killer whale too. It's a fantastic place to come looking for these creatures. And it's right on our doorstep. One of the problems with the marine environment from our point of view is its relative inaccessibility. You see, all of that remarkable diversity of life is down there beneath the waves. But the whales and dolphins spend time at the surface, of course, and there they forge a link between humans and the sea. They are perfect ambassadors when it comes to marine conservation. Orca have been running the Your Seas Education Campaign in the northeast of England, and it's been tremendously successful, engaging people with whales and dolphins and all marine life. And I'm very pleased to say that now it's spreading south. They're going to run it in the city of Portsmouth. And one of its central objectives is to get people to think more about that marine life, so they'll help us conserve it. Between March and September every year, Orca has wildlife officers stationed on board a series of ferries run by DFDS Seaways and Brittany Ferries. And their job is not only to monitor all of the whales and dolphins that they find and diligently record them, but also, critically, to engage with the passengers. Because if they can point out a whale and dolphin, if they can enthuse them about this amazing group of animals, then we can bring them on board and they might be, like us, more keen to conserve these creatures. In conjunction with Whitney Ferries, Orca runs I Spy Mini Whale Watching Cruises. You can sail from the south coast of England across the Bay of Biscay to northern Spain and back again, and whilst you're on the ferry, you might be able to spot up to one third of all of the world's whale and dolphin species. What about that? One of the best things about Orca, from my point of view, are its monitoring schemes. You see, over a period of years, they've standardised these on these ferry routes. They've collected the data in the same way, in the same place, at the same time. And this means that when we analyse it, we can see very real changes in the animals' distributions, their populations, and many other things besides. But what's also critical is that all of this data, this very valuable data, is shared freely. And to this end, Orca co-leads the European Cetacean Monitoring Coalition, and everyone in that coalition gives everyone else the information that they've acquired, which is fantastic, because when it's finally analysed, this will mean that we can all make better informed decisions about these creatures' conservation. With everyone out here on deck all day long, eyes peeled for whales and dolphins, it's a great opportunity to record anything else that we see in the ocean, and this, I'm afraid, isn't always positive. One of the new surveys that Orca is doing is for ghost gear. Now this is pieces of fishing net that's broken away and is drifting freely in the ocean. And the problem with this is that it can entangle sea life, things such as turtles near the surface, but sadly also those whales and dolphins. And it can do that with fatal results. But we need to know where it is, where it's drifting, and perhaps where it's originating from. So now, all of the material that we spot from the deck here is being diligently recorded as well. On these kind of trips and with this work, we're educating the public 
And that's a vital part of it because they can do so much. And indeed with that education, we're spreading it out to children. We've got programs running in the north and the south of the UK, and they're the future. And that's what this is all about. It's absolutely vital. This is the last unknown place on the planet. And we can and you know, we should help to protect it. It's so important for our future and for the future of all of our children and grandchildren. This is a great chance to do something important.